First of all, uh, Representative Casey, just tell me why you wanted to get in this race with a lot of people already in it. Uh, at the time, I, at the time that I had actually decided, there was only uh, four people who had declared that they were going to run or potentially run for office, uh, and I felt that um, that if I did not take the opportunity at this time, I would actually regret it uh, because it, it is an opportunity, like for everyone that's involved. Uh, especially if you're currently in office, you don't lose your position if you actually lose the election. You don't lose your position that you're currently in. So um, I think it, everybody terms that as the freebie. Um, but for me, um, I didn't see anybody in the race that could, that I would want to represent me or my constituents in Northern Rhode Island. Uh, and I think that um, I offer a, a little something different um, than most. I'm a little bit more conservative than most of the candidates that are in in the race currently, uh, let's say, and because I'm sure there's going to be more. Uh, so I think that I have, uh, you know, a path that, 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 might be, uh, that might be pretty successful. Right. And you mentioned you're more conservative. Um, so I, I think it's already, you know, I've already seen you, you get an A grade from the NRA in the past. So where, yep. do, you, where do you stand on on gun rights, I know most people in the race want would well, support an assault weapons ban. I would like to say that I'm a defender of the Constitution, um, but um, I've always voted for uh, sensible gun legislation. Uh, bump stocks, we, we got rid of bump stocks and things like that. There, there are certain laws that we've created over the last few years um, that I haven't agreed with fully uh, because of particulars that were in the laws. Um, and, you know, we can go we probably can go through that at another time, but the majority of the issues are um, we need to create laws that are actually going to solve the problems that we have, and I don't think that the majority of the stuff that we have passed actually solves a current problem. Um, the no guns on, s on school grounds uh, legislation that we had didn't really solve a problem for us. Um, I think that we need to have more resource officers. That was the solution. Uh, I think the I think the ban on uh, large capacity magazines affects really um, all of your sportsmen and your and your law abiding citizens who own firearms that they go to the the range with and shoot target practice um, and have competitions and, and those type of things. So I don't believe that that is solving the school shootings problem um, when you you don't want to limit a concealed carry permit holder. Um, from carrying a gun on school grounds if they're dropping off their child at work. Uh, and I think it also um, it limits, uh, especially a female woman who's been battered by her husband or a boyfriend and who has to protect themselves if they're going to drop their kids off at school and they have to put not, not have their protection piece with them at that time. That's when they're susceptible. So I think there is a lot of things that really need to be thought out a little bit better with regard to uh, gun safety and firearm legislation. Uh, the assault weapons ban, I know that the, the president has talked about that, so that could come up in Congress. It's being debated at the State House yeah. now. Would you support an assault weapons it's ban or possible. no? Um, I think that there's an assault weapons misnomer, first of all. Um, you know, you talk about um, a firearm, there's a the way that the firearms work, when you pull a trigger, it's one shot per trigger pull. That's, an, that's a semi-automatic, it's called a semi-automatic weapon. And in those cases, um, the semi-automatic pistol and the semi-automatic rifle, the mechanism is exactly the same. The uh, pistol grip and all those other things and the shroud that goes over the barrel of the gun, that's all mud flaps and I liken it to a car. It's mud flaps and mag wheels. It's decoration. Uh, it looks dangerous. It's the same exact operation as a as a handgun. Um, and if you you know if you want to limit the amount of rounds, that's fine. That's not a big deal. But the issues that I have are that I think that the firearms legislation that we've had has not been put in place, and though the things that we put in place really have not solved a problem that we have. If so is that a no? What's on, that? on banning assault weapons like an AR-15? Um, an AR-15, the, the AR is, uh, there's, a, there's a particular name for it, it was a style of rifle. Uh, it's not an a, AR does not mean assault rifle. Um, so when you get into those misnomers, 
um, and when people talk about it and they're uneducated about it, I think that that is part of the problem, that we have uh, we don't have uh, enough education about it. Um, so I don't think that a AR-15 is something that needs to be banned. Okay. In my in my in my position okay. in my in my so opinion. I, I guess the thing right so what's termed an assault weapons ban you would say no to. Um, I, I don't want to call it an assault weapon. Yeah, uh, and that's that's just an opinion. Okay. Uh, how about on abortion? I know that had been a big issue in last year's congressional race. Yep. Um, what's your stance on on abortion uh, and limiting any access to? My abortion? personal stance on abortion is I'm against it, but I don't want to tr overturn Roe versus Wade. This is not. This is not my goal in life. Um, I think there are many other more important issues that we need to deal with. Um, I feel that it's been the law. Roe v. Wade has been the law for a long time. It's not my goal to change that. Um, I do hold fast on uh, late-term abortions and um, partial birth abortions. I, I, I just can't, as a, I'm, a, I'm an EMT and a firefighter, I'm a rescue guy. Um, I have a cousin that, that um, gave birth to a child at 25 weeks, and this was 14 months ago. Um, and that baby has fought and has survived, and um, she's now, on, on my cousin's birthday two weeks ago, is now crawling and is off oxygen, and she is here and she's alive. So when we get to those type of decisions, that's where I, I draw the line. If a woman, if a woman has been raped or, or uh, assaulted, um, I have no issue. I have no issue with that. And like I said, I don't want to overturn Roe v. Wade, but I have particular views regarding partial birth abortion and late-term abortion. When people call that health care, I have a problem with that. Uh, so, if there was a vote in Congress to codify Roe v. Wade based on the Supreme Court's decision, would you vote for it? At this point, at this point, I would. It has been it's been the law for a long time. I don't think we need to change that. But you um, would want to have some restrictions. Yes, I, un I, I completely understand bodily autonomy. I don't think the government should be in your bedroom, in your bank account, and they should be off your back. Um, and they shouldn't be in your gun safe either. These are, you know, I, I believe in liberty. And that's, I think that that is the real key in, in all aspects. Um, so you mentioned that you're more conservative than most of the people who were who were in the Generally. race. But you, you think that's a good thing in this. Do you think that that's going to rub people who come out to a Democratic primary maybe the wrong way and they want to see more progressive policies. It, it may rub some people the wrong way, but let me tell you, there's 16 people in the race right now. Is that how many have declared? Um, if you can't find a candidate that you like in this race, I'm sorry, there's probably not going to be a candidate for you. So that's, that, that's one of the things that's great about this particular election. Everyone has a choice. This election should unify the party because everybody has an opportunity to pick someone that should satisfy the majority of their needs. The problem that I really have is that, um, it's not really a problem, but the issue that I have is some people uh, will, will be what we call a one issue voter. Somebody is only concerned about firearms legislation and another person is only considered a, considering the abortion issue. But I think you have to look for someone who's in Congress, you have to look for somebody who has what I would feel is the more entire package. Um, we have to be strong on business. We have to be strong on jobs. Uh, and those are the things that I think I bring to the table. Um, do, do you think if this wasn't Rhode Island, you, you wouldn't be a Democrat? Or Rhode Island has all kinds of different Democrats, conservative Democrats? Uh, you know, I you don't know. know. I, I don't know about what other states you feel. I'm, a, I'm originally from Massachusetts. Um, but I would consider myself, you know, how old are you? I don't want to even say how old you are. Figure out how old you are. But I'm, I feel like I am more of a John Kennedy Democrat. You know, older, the, the older folks, I think, will understand where I'm coming from. I think they have the same, the same values. Um, I'm, I'm not about changing uh, the world of politics. I, I just think that we have a severe disconnect, even in the party itself. Um, we have a section of the party that is, has gone a little bit more left, a little bit more progressive than some, than some folks would like. But they don't want to leave the party to become a Republican. They want to remain Democrats. So I think there's, there, there needs to be a little common ground with everybody. And I think I bring that middle centrist view uh, along with that. And I think people will, will re that will resonate with people. Uh, cost of living and inflation, what do you think contributed to that? And what would you want to do about it? 
Uh, what do I think contributed to it? I think uh, COVID hit everybody uh, from a few standpoints. COVID hit everybody from a financial standpoint. Um, it was very difficult. People had to stay home, couldn't go to work. In a majority of cases, I'm a first responder. I had to, I, I had to go to work. This is what, you know, this is what we do. Um, but you know, for uh, your, I'm not going to say any names of of companies, but for your larger box stores to be open because, I mean, did COVID did COVID just say we're not going to go to those larger stores and and affect people? And all the mom and pops were shut down. Uh, it was a very difficult time for a lot of people. We had uh, COVID money from uh, the federal government to help alleviate some of those losses and some of those uh, issues. And we had uh, extra unemployment money that came to people. Um, I think everybody took a real mental hit with COVID as well. Uh, people were shut in. You, you, you could not socialize uh, like, like we used to. And I think the mental health aspect of that was, was uh, affected a lot of people uh, in a lot of ways. And people lost family members from COVID. Uh, there were times when uh, you, people could not visit their family members who were in a nursing home. My mom and my mother-in-law uh, were both in nursing homes at the time. I didn't see my mother for a year. That was very difficult. And I have friends and, and you know, we're a small state. You, everybody knows somebody who's, who has a family member that was either passed or was in a, in a nursing home and could not be seen for over a year. It's a very, very difficult time mentally for everybody. Um, so I think that that in itself has kind of changed the way people feel about life. And I think that people are now coming out and they're like, hey, listen, I want to do what I want to do. I don't want to be told what to do. Um, and I think, I think that, that uh, people are just looking for a little bit of autonomy from having someone on their back and telling them what to do. And, and you know, I'm, I'm not saying that we can, we can solve all of those problems, but I think COVID was a really difficult situation and it, and it created some fine, a lot of financial difficulties for a lot of families. I think um, there's probably a number of the more progressive uh, candidates in this race who would blame big business, big oil, uh, big companies for jacking up prices on things, uh, and that's what led to inflation. Do you do you see it that way, or do you think it was more the federal money in, that was pumped into the system? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm I'm not the financial guru. Uh, I'm I'm on the I'm on the front line. I'm the guy who sees it. You know, when when you know, I go into people's homes and to do rescue calls, and and you know, we see how people how people are living. Uh, a lot of families people who who could not afford the place that they were staying um, have to move in with their family members so you have multiple generations of family living together in a very small apartment it's very difficult to to for a lot of people to understand you know how that works and because it's it's almost like the, the substance abuse and and mental health issues they don't they're 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 not socioeconomically in one group, they affect everybody all across the board, and COVID did that. I think uh, it created it created a a situation where we really had to try to understand how people were affected by it. Um, I think that I think that uh, over a long period of time, we may still we're going to still see the effects. I mean, yeah, I mean we may say that COVID has been controlled, and it's and it's in a in a uh, a sit we're in a situation where it's calmed down a little bit, it hasn't spread as fast, or the spread has been controlled. But now we're in a situation where we have to deal with all of the after effects, the mental health problems, um, the unemployment problems. Um, and and th there are some situations where people, f people worked from home and then they said, I'm comfortable with this. I'd rather work at home. I don't want to, I don't want to have to commute. I don't want to do the things that I used to do. So th there's, there's a, uh, there's so many psychological things that have come out of the, the COVID situation. You've brought it up, uh, you know, your work as a, a firefighter EMT. How do you think that influences uh, your political style and would influence you in this race and what you would want people to know about maybe what kind of perspective that brings? Uh, well, I, I don't know that it influences, uh, and it might. It might influence my policy decisions a little bit, but what what I have that a lot of people 
and the race may not have is I have a direct view. I, I, I work as a fireman. I work in the state legislature. I'm a self-employed contractor. Um, I have three jobs. I've always had three jobs. I'm very busy. But I, being on the front line through COVID and the way that I am now, I see how people live. I see how people struggle. Um, you know, uh, the great politicians are like, okay, we understand, you know, you guys are hurting here and there. It's like, no, no, no. I am in people's homes. I see how they live and I see the struggles that they have and I see the mental anguish and I'll tell you a story um, I was on a rescue call about a month and a half ago it was a car accident and we got called from Woonsocket to North Smithfield to help out their rescue was busy so there was a gentleman who was who was in the car accident he was outside of his car he had a broken leg um, and he had just he had just literally just got himself back on his feet got a job got an apartment and he was more worried about his job and more worried about the mental anguish of how am I going to stay afloat, afford my apartment. I've been having such a hard time doing this. And those are the things that that affected me. He was more worried about that than his broken leg and how, how that was going to work. He was more worried about his own particular situation. So those are the mental issues. Those are the things that really I think I see more than most. Um. Because I've asked some of the other candidates uh, this as well. Do you think Joe Biden should run for president again? Um, I, I, I'm not even going to get into that. I mean, yeah. that's that's way beyond uh, that's way beyond what I'm looking at. I'm, I'm 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 really looking at. I'm the chairman of the municipal government and housing committee. We have a housing crisis. I handled the health and human services committee during the pandemic. Um, we have a job to do. Myself and, and Rep. Abney, uh, Chairman of Finance, we have a budget to do. We have a lot of stuff to do. We got two months to do it before we even get into this entire election piece. Um, yeah, we have to kind of focus on what's happening with, with our election, but more importantly, we have a job to do for, for our constituents and for the state right now. Um, and if we have to solve this housing issue, um, and I think we're, we're on our way to doing that. Um, we're working on a few special projects to make to try and make that happen, um, but that's what's more important right now. Um, when 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 we get out of session and we're done and we kick this thing off, then you know, I mean, I'm running all the time, but then then you know, the rubber hits the pavement and we go.